but we'll get back to, to these topics, you know, in the Q&A. Uh, but let me turn now to Matthias and all the uh, partner in crime, in digital diplomacy crime. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Matthias is the founder of DigiTips, um, um, a boutique digital agency. He is, uh, ho uh, however, be best known for, as the founder of Diplomacy. This is a study that he has uh, been actually conducted for the past uh, six, seven years. This is how we started to know each other. A study about world leaders and diplomats on social media. He is one of the social media pioneers, actually, having put the World Economic Forum on Twitter exactly 15 years ago. Uh, more recently, we've seen Matthias uh, very, uh, getting very much involved in monitoring what is happening in Ukraine, especially with the rise of TikTok. Um, he's actually now the specialist in understanding what happens on TikTok in digital diplomacy, among other things. So my question for you, Matthias, is what have you observed online in terms of the main narrative circulating on TikTok in relation to the conflict, the so-called TikTok wars? Who are promoting them? And to what extent can we explain their success online? Are they successful? Are they not? And those successful narratives, what seems to account for, for them? What factors account for them? Thank you very much, Matthias. You have the floor. Okay, well, thank you very much, Cornelio. Um, actually, triplomacy is already in its 10th year, um, but unfortunately, I'm no longer uh, involved, but I'm, I'm thinking of doing a study on uh, continuing the, the study of uh, how governments use the different social networks. So TikTok, uh, really interesting. The New Yorker um, has called just before the invasion, the New Yorker called the, the conflict in Ukraine the world's first TikTok war uh, because of how the app was used to document the situation on the ground. But as Vox pointed out, it's a mess. Um, you know, as the war in Ukraine has shown, uh, if there needed to be any proof, TikTok is a short video platform for serious communications and no longer just you know a platform for funny music and dance videos. So TikTok was launched in 2016 um, and uh, became available worldwide in 2018 after merging with Musically also a Chinese-owned platform. And today, TikTok is the sixth most used social media plan, pl platform after Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, Instagram, and WeChat with well over 1 billion active users. I saw in Russia, apparently, TikTok has 24 million uh, us users in Russia. So why is TikTok so popular? It was you know, initially dominated by these music and dance videos, uh, very popular uh, among the teenage user base, but it has evolved. Um, so as of February this year, um, there were 71 world leaders, heads of state, heads of government and foreign ministers active on the platform and half of these um, are verified. Um, the most followed by the way is the French president Emmanuel Macron, followed by five um, leaders from Latin America, and uh, number one there is Nayib Bukele, the president of El Salvador. So TikTok's rise, you know, can be explained by its ease of use um, to shoot, edit, and post videos. The videos can be up to 10 minutes long now, uh, so it's no longer just a short video platform, and you can go live with a, you know, with one click. So much easier to really handle than, than YouTube, for example, or even Instagram. So TikTok was the channel uh, where we, where open source investigators could really follow the, the Russian troop buildup uh, before the invasion. Ordinary Russian TikTokers shared videos of military material passing on trains through their towns and military trucks on the roads leading to Ukraine. Um, a large group of Russian soldiers I saw boarding a train in Chechnya confirming really the findings of the intelligence uh, community about troop movements in Russia. However, when the invasion started, Russian soldiers went silent since their phones have been confiscated before the invasion. I mean, you know, they don't even know where they are. They could use uh, Google Maps. So uh, this was uh, quite interesting. So, um, but what we've seen is a coordinated, some coordinated campaigns on, um, on TikTok, uh, since the start of the special military operation, many Russian TikTok influencers have contributed videos to TikTok hashtag campaigns. In one campaign entitled, 
Russian Lives Matter, set to the music of Katyusha. It's a patriotic Russian folk song which became famous uh, during the Second World War. The influencers take a knee and bow, holding a handwritten sign uh, with the words Russophobia, Donbass, Luhansk, sanctions uh, above their head, and the hashtag RLM, in short for Russian uh, Lives Matter, has so far generated 26 million views on TikTok. You might say, oh, 20 million views on TikTok, that is a big number. Well, it sounds impressive, but it has not become viral. Just in comparison, the hashtag stand with Ukraine has 475 million, so half a billion views. And the hashtag, the Russian hashtag, Nietzsche, uh, no war totals 2.6 billion views. So um, this, these coordinated campaigns really haven't hit in. Um, and the hashtag didn't even spill over to Instagram or TikTok. You know, you can search um, Instagram for hashtag uh, uh, RLM. You won't find much uh, in favor of uh, Russian Lives Matter. Another indication why these campaigns have so far failed is that the most liked comments, which on the TikTok videos, the most liked comments rise to the top. Um, are most of them are in support of Ukraine. So one comment which uh, read, Russian lives matter, sorry, Russian lives don't matter to your president. Read about the 11,000 dead soldiers in Ukraine more than in the Chechen war. Um, in another campaign, 35 Russian TikTokers I found have with a combined following of 80 million. So every one of them has more than 1 million um, followers and some of them are verified. Um, flash the victory sign with both hands and you know, do a little, you know, uh, twirl. And basically at the end, they're creating the Z sign, which has really become the rallying cry for the Russian invasion. Um, and is featured out, as you know, on tanks and uh, vehicles. So once again, this was, you know, an interesting, you know, and coordinated campaign. Uh, but once again, uh, one of the top comments was <laughs> from one somebody from Ukraine thanking the influencers for supporting President Zelensky, whose name, as you all know, starts with a Z. So we don't really know who is behind these campaigns. Is it the government, you know, uh, paying for it, or you know, if the influence influencers have been paid to host these? Uh, but what is interesting, they're all reading from the same script and instructions on what to post for each campaign have been shared on uh, Telegram. So, you know, I do, don't think that they have been very effective, these, these campaigns. Um, but today what we see, um, TikTok is full of footage from the battlefield. Um, and not all TikTok users are in Ukraine, you know, who share these this footage are based, you know, are in Ukraine. Um, but it seems Ukrainian soldiers have the upper hand because they still have their mobile phones. Um, they have been briefed on how to, what to share and what not to share. Just this morning, I saw a live TikTok uh, from the trenches with a Ukrainian soldier at a checkpoint somewhere in, Ukra in the Ukrainian countryside uh, in a field, chatting live on the platform and receiving hundreds of messages of support from the TikTok community. Uh, his name is Alexei Bilous, B-I-L-O-U-S, um, with hashtags before and after his name. And he was very careful not to re reveal his position, um, but he has now more than 150,000 followers on the platform. So um, quite interesting, you know, how that the uh, Ukrainian Ministry of Defense still lets their, you know, the, the troops have their mobile devices. So TikTok has suspended has announced that it's suspended live streaming and posting new content on the platform uh, in Russia in light of Russia's new fake news laws. But um, most of the Russian TikTok influencer that I have looked at have continued to post content uh, and gone back to post whatever they post, skits or you know, uh, video, um, uh, fashion um, posts or, or dances. So, um, and one I even saw yesterday uh, shared instructions on how to um, continue act to access social media uh, sites in Russia using VPN, virtual uh, private network. So this is kind of you know, what we see, but it is very, very difficult to pinpoint, to find just videos from Ukraine. Um, if you put in Ukraine, even you know in Russian, you will find just billions of, uh, of videos. Uh, it's, it is really uh, very, very diff difficult to monitor you know, uh, and to see what, you know, what really comes from, 
from uh, from the, the ground in Ukraine. Thank you very much.